another massive exchange has just been liquidated. And I think this could trigger the collapse of FTX, the collapse of crypto, and the collapse of the stock market, causing the AMC squeeze. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I want to dive straight in with the key information. So, Forbes just reported that crypto broker Voyager Digital has just filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It says according to the filing, Voyager's estimated assets are between $1 billion and $10 billion, with between $1 billion and $10 billion in estimated liabilities as well. The Toronto-based firm estimates that it has more than 100,000 creditors or 100,000 people that it owes money to. Voyager said they had approximately $137 million in cash and owned crypto assets on hand as of June 24th. The following Monday, the firm revealed it had used $75 million of Almeida's loan to facilitate customer orders and withdrawals and engaged investment bank, Moales & Company, as financial advisors. Sources familiar with the matter said Almeida Ventures, aka FTX or Sam Bankman Free, does not expect to recoup that capital. And it also says other crypto companies that had lent cash to Three Arrows Capital are also struggling to stay afloat. Goldman Sachs is looking to raise $2 billion from investors to buy up distressed assets, I'm sure at a discount, from Celsius. On July 1st, FTX and crypto lender BlockFi entered into an agreement that would give FTX an option to purchase BlockFi for what was described as a variable price that could go as high as only $240 million, aka a 95% drop from BlockFi's previous valuation at around $5 billion. But the reason why I think this is so disastrous and why it could cause the collapse of FTX, the collapse of crypto and the collapse of the stock market is because 30-year-old billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried had extended loans to Voyager totaling $485 million in cash and Bitcoin. So that's $485 million that FTX and Sam Bankman-Fried aren't going to see a single penny in return on. As Watchaguru has reported, the FTX CEO has been noted among the unsecured creditors. That basically means that when Voyager Digital is liquidated, any cash that's left over or that's recuperated from its debtors will be used to pay the secure creditors and not the unsecured creditors. Any mortgages or secured loans that Voyager Digital has will be paid first and unsecured creditors such as FTX won't be seeing a penny. So that's $485 million in cash and Bitcoin that's completely disappeared and completely vanished from Sam Bankman frieds account and from FTX. That's obviously a giant amount of cash to lose and if other crypto exchanges like BlockFi end up also failing in the coming weeks, that'll be another 500 million or another billion that FTX end up losing. But not only that, obviously as more and more crypto exchanges are failing and more and more hedge funds are failing, this is gonna cause investors to panic and withdraw their cash not only from BlockFi, but also from FTX as well. Obviously don't forget FTX is a crypto exchange, no different from Binance, no different from Coinbase, no different from BlockFi, and no different from Voyager Digital as well. So obviously as more and more customers are getting panicked and more and more customers are either exiting the crypto market entirely or taking their coins off exchange, this is more money that's going to be removed from FTX as well. So FTX are basically taking losses from both angles. Their investments are disappearing and being wiped out and their own consumer cash or their own customer cash is also dwindling as well. Maybe this alone will cause FTX to fail or maybe we'll need to see another high profile failure like BlockFi, Coinbase, Binance or many others before FTX ends up failing as well. And obviously when a giant exchange like FTX or Binance does end up failing, it will wipe out the crypto market, causing further other crashes in the stock market. As Jonathan tweeted, he said Voyager Digital has filed for bankruptcy protection with more than 100,000 creditors and billions of dollars in liabilities. And it's gone. And Francis has also tweeted saying, do you want to know why all of these crypto lenders are suspending withdrawals and why all of these exchanges are going bankrupt? She said this is why. This photo says the only real dollars in the cryptocurrency industry are those paid in by new entrants when they make their first cryptocurrency purchases. For example, a lot of times when people are trading crypto, they're only trading back and forth between either stablecoins and Bitcoin or between Bitcoin and other altcoins. 
That's obviously generating additional value and causing the market cap of these coins to increase, but no actual real dollars are entering the market. And obviously one of the main problems is the fact the crypto market isn't backstopped by the Federal Reserve. Obviously if tons and tons of people started withdrawing money from the US stock exchange, the Fed can just print more. Whereas they can't really print more dollars into the crypto universe other than printing more stable coins, which isn't the same as direct US dollars. She said the rest of the dollar liquidity on crypto markets is provided by dollar pegged stable coins. She said these fall into two groups, those that have actual dollars and or dollar denominated safe liquid assets backing them and those that don't. She said there aren't enough of the former AK stable coins pegged by genuine US dollars to enable everyone to cash out into real dollars. And she said there's no guarantee that the latter can actually be cashed out into real dollars at all. Obviously for the stable coins that aren't fully pegged with genuine US dollars, they likely won't have enough dollars to pay out everybody withdrawing. And the main problem with that is the fact the Fed don't print more dollars for the crypto market, they only print more dollars for the stock market. And she said there's now a race to exchange cryptocurrencies for the few real dollars still available, as is always the case in unregulated markets because obviously crypto is unregulated and doesn't have the Fed to print additional dollars into the crypto market. There's only a set amount of dollars that were put into the market that can be withdrawn. And this is where we're seeing more and more people getting spooked and withdrawing their money off exchanges, either exiting crypto completely or moving their coins to cold wallets. And that's why it's effectively a race and the last one to the door will be the loser. And that's why more and more exchanges are being liquidated because they don't have the Fed to print additional dollars for them. These crypto exchanges obviously aren't being bailed out like big banks were back in 2008. And that's why we're seeing so many exchanges going under and why more and more exchanges will likely fail as well. This article says Wall Street says a recession is coming, but consumers are saying it's already here. The article says the recession calls are getting louder on Wall Street, but for many of the households and businesses who make up the world economy, the downturn is already here. Many of these genuine businesses in America, those mum and pop owned restaurants or those small business owners are seeing less and less customers and less and less consumers because genuine people don't have the cash for these expenses anymore. Because inflation has gone up so high, because energy, oil and rent is so expensive, people don't have the money nowadays to go out and enjoy themselves at local restaurants or local mum and pop owned businesses. So even though major banks are already calling for a recession in the future, many genuine businesses around the world, not just in the US, but in the UK as well, are already seeing the signs of the recession. And as Mac10 tweeted, he said, rising prices are hiding final demand actually collapsing at the fastest pace since 2020 and 2008. The fake inflation narrative, aka the increasing of prices, has given policymakers the mistaken illusion of a strong economy. You may think that rising prices equates to strong demand, but actually as a result of inflation, prices are increasing, but demand is actually collapsing. So far, inflation is hiding the recession and investors will pay the final price for it. This chart shows real personal consumption expenditures absolutely collapsing at the fastest rate seen since before 2008. Interestingly, JP Morgan has said, while some may argue the US is already in a recession, they said it's inconceivable for a labor market that's generated close to 500,000 average monthly gains for the past six months. But as Crash Wondering and PT Gamer replied, they said the labor market is a lagging indicator. JP Morgan should be smart enough to know this. The layoffs are already beginning. I spoke yesterday about how there's been tons and tons of tech layoffs, not just in the crypto industry, but basically in all startup tech companies and most tech companies now as a whole. PT Gamer said they are smart enough to realize it's a lagging indicator, but they're betting on the fact that retail is not smart enough. 2008 all over again. Fortunately, I have been warning you of the coming recession and the coming stock market crash or the current stock market crash for some time now. And therefore, we know the US is already in a recession. But there's something very interesting that was recently pointed out by Jeff Winnegar. He said, don't look now, but we have a rally in China. He said one theory is first in, first out. Because China was the first to enter the bear market, maybe they're the first ones to climb out. 
China actually peaked all the way back in February of 2021, whereas obviously the US stock market didn't peak until December of 2021. The China recession lasted from February 2021 until around March, April of 2022, so around 12 or 13 months. Because the US stock market peaked in November, December, it's likely that in December or maybe January of 2023, that's when the market will bottom out. But that also means we likely have another six months of the S&P 500 continuing to fall before we hit that bottom point. Looking at China's market, while it peaked in February 2021, it did actually fall past those previous March 2020 lows. And therefore, it's likely to see the S&P 500 continuing to fall potentially past those pandemic lows, and we may see the S&P 500 falling below 2,500 points and below 2,000 points. And therefore, it's likely we still have a long way to go for the stock market to continue falling before the recession is over. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.